Come on. Let's uh let's go ahead and move into our NFL draft reaction and recap. Uh, you want to give the spiel that you gave yesterday? If if you did not watch yesterday's show, I'll let Chris explain exactly how we're going through this. Um, but we decided yeah. there was no possible way to do a real recap the way we're doing our daily shows, and there's not a whole lot of news going on every day. And so sure. we thought this is a great opportunity for us to hit every team, every conference, every division, and give us some content for a little bit. So let's do that. So we're basically going division by division. We're going to break down what we think. And basically it is, do we like it? Do we dislike it? Do we hate it? Do we love it? On And what, who are the winners and losers in the division? And basically who do we think won the division? Who do we think lost the division from the draft? Yep. If you are not a massive NFL fan, uh, there are eight divisions with four teams in each division that makes up 32 teams. We're going to get through all of them in eight days. So today is day two. That means it is time for the AFC North. And we are going to start with the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, obviously, had the number one pick. That is always a good thing. They, they got Joe Burrow. In the second round, they got T. Higgins. In the third round, they got Logan Wilson out of Wyoming, a linebacker. Um, Akeem Davis Gaither from App State, a linebacker that they got in, uh, I want to say, the fourth round. Uh, they they really killed this draft, man. They they did some good things. Their team needs were quarterback, linebacker, and offensive line. Now, if you are an Andy Dalton believer, then you could say that they really didn't need a quarterback. But I think it was pretty well proven that they needed new blood at the position. I don't think anybody. Um, I don't think anybody is an Andy Dalton believer. I, I, I believe in the Red Rocket. Family is not an Andy Dalton believer. I believe in the Red Rocket. I think that he could do wonderful things with your Patriots, but we'll see. You're gonna stand on that island alone, and we'll never find out if it's true or not. Yeah, no, because he he's not gonna go there. <laughs> so, um, but I, I I thought Andy Dalton was was okay. I don't think he's as good okay. as Joe Burrow. I don't. I'm not disagreeing the fact that he's okay. The problem, the reason they've been mediocre for a decade is because Andy Dalton's okay. Yeah, I, and and you're 100 percent right. Um, you know how I feel. He's. He's the quarterback that I point to and say, I don't want this guy. Yeah. I don't want him because he'll never be so bad where I get the first pick overall. But he'll never be great and win a Super Bowl or a playoff game ever in his life. Yeah, he, he's never I, won a playoff I would game. rather boom or bust at the quarterback position more than any other position. Yeah. Um, I need to know in two or three years, am I shooting you in the head or am I giving you the keys to the franchise? The, That's it. The Bengals... Uh, as far as the huddle report goes, they are sixth in the NFL in this draft as far as getting value for their picks. Every single pick that they made had value, which yep. is, and, and this is according to the huddle report's, you know, top 250 list. Uh, that's pretty impressive, you know, and not, not that they were paying attention to the huddle report, but, um, I mean, they also got an A from Pro Football Focus. And that's, I mean, it going back and looking at, everything that they did here, this made them seem like a competent organization, like that front office might actually know what they're doing. It, it's the first draft in, I'm going to say, many years where we walked away and, and said, huh, maybe the Bengals had a really good draft. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, round five, they had uh, Khalid Kareem, the edge rusher from Notre Dame. Round six, they got uh, the tackle out of Kansas, Hakeem Adinji. Uh, again, I mean, we'll see. You know, I, he, he's kind oh, of a project, but... Round seven, dude, it, it doesn't matter. Everybody yeah. has a flyer at this point. You got that right. Uh, KB jumped in prediction. Every team that drafted an Alabama player gets an A-plus from Gary, F from, uh, or an F-off from Chris. Eh, not it's really. It's not true. It's not true. No, we, we try and be unbiased. We're this thing. Yeah, we, we try and I've be unbiased really here. That. Um, I, I will say this. I like what the Bengals did here. I, I yeah, think did. everything that they did fit a need. You know, they, they didn't go super hard after the offensive line, but I think they can do that in free agency, uh, or they can even go through trades. I mean, they've, they've got quite a few pieces that they can move around that we have some value. We disagree on the offensive line. We just, we just do. I've watched enough the last two or three years. I've watched enough of the NFL to know there's only three or four teams that have good offensive lines. All the rest of them are crap. So okay. just, just get, you know, 
I've seen teams win without offensive linemen. I just have. Yeah. I used to believe it's a necessity. You have to have it or you can't. Win. And maybe you can't win a Super Bowl without it. But we're trying to get from the worst team in the league and one of the worst franchises in 20 years, okay? We're not talking Super Bowl yet. Let's let's get out of the toilet before we start talking Super Bowl. There are other times. Free agency is done. There are no offensive linemen available that anybody's going to go get, all right? You you can go get a few outlier players at different position. O line ain't one of them. Um, so what they have is what they got at O line, and it might be just fine. I think it's going to be fine. Bur- Burrow is a competent, capable quarterback that can move around. He knows how to avoid pressure, get the ball out, find the open man when he's on the run. He he's not a statue. He's not your Peyton Manning type where he's just going to drop back four steps, five steps. And if he can't get the ball out, he's going down. He's he can move. So, you know what one of his uh, one of his highest comparisons was to Ryan Tannehill, which is a little good. Now, obviously, he grades much better than Tannehill. Yeah, but no, I but get it's that. the same type. Tannehill of was was a receiver that that they converted to to quarterback. Yeah, at Texas A and M. Yep. Yeah, I mean he's an athlete. Absolutely. I don't know that Burrow's athletic enough to have ever played wide receiver at any level, but he's definitely an athlete. I oh, mean, the dude, you know. He's, I, I heard it on uh, on some of the draft talk over the weekend, and, of course, it was brought up that he's, quote, sneaky athletic. It's like there's nothing sneaky well, about this. They he, have to say sneaky because he's white. I know. The sneaky it's, part is the white guy. Yeah. They should have said he's got a high motor. Because that, but he doesn't play a position that you want a high motor at, so they don't want to say that. No, that that makes sense. That's normally the white. That's sneaky a, yeah. fast yeah. means a white guy who's really fast. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, McKinnon jumped in. He said the Bengals had a mid tier line like the rest of their team. You can have that line with above average skill players, or have a great line with average skill players and succeed, but not both. And they damn sure had both. Yeah, yeah. And now I think they've got like they'll get AJ Green back this year. They will have T. Higgins I want, up. I want AJ side. to have one more good season in the sun for Joe's sake, but also for his legacy's sake. Yeah. He's been mediocre to hurt the last, what, two to three years? Yeah, it, I think it's been it's three. It's been so long since he was elite. And, man, when he was elite, there was nobody better than him. Yeah, you are dead on. He just couldn't stay healthy, and I hate that that's going to be his legacy. Give him one more fun year in the sun – where he can be healthy and look like the star that he was. And then if he moves on, does something else, at least we remember him for that. I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's move on to your brownies. So we like what the Bengals did, right? Oh, 100%. Yes. I'm I'm not going to say I love it yet. I haven't gotten to a team that I love yet. but No, we'll we'll do winners and losers and whatnot at the the end of this thing. But, yeah, I I like what the Bengals did 100%. Yeah. The – Cleveland Browns are next up on our docket. They needed offensive line help. They needed linebacker help. They needed wide receiver help. And honestly, they uh, they did all of that other than wide receiver help, but I don't know really how much wide receiver help they really need. I don't know they really why need. they needed wide receiver. They have two elite wide receivers. Yeah. They don't have a huge depth chart of wide receivers, but they got two of the best 20 wide receivers in the league. Per, uh, per the huddle That's report, weird. their value grade was 7th. In this draft, so right behind the Bengals. Right behind the Bengals, that's right. Um, the only person that they took that was not a value pick per the huddle report was linebacker Jacob Phillips out of LSU. Yep. Um, other than that, everybody else, offensive line, Jedrick Wills, they got him at 10. There was talk about Wills going number four. Um, KB jumped in and threw a, uh, threw a poop icon to us. So, you know, <laughs> the Brownies, of course. Uh, they, got, they got Grant Delpit in the second round. Uh, way later than I thought anybody else would, which is yeah. I thought, I've, yeah. you know, the, the the two safeties that fell were were Delpit and McKenzie, and I I just couldn't I couldn't understand it where DBs were going like crazy. I just think great safety play affects a defense way better than a cornerback does. Yes, I mean it depends they do on so your much scheme. more than just lock down one side or or one player. They affect the game. I think at a from a from a big picture view than than one cornerback and cornerbacks just went like nuts and these two safeties just fell and fell and I just couldn't yeah. believe it. It was it was definitely strange. Delpit, you know, he didn't have a great last season. I think a lot of that had to do with the fact he was hurt for no, the majority he was playing of the hurt. 
Yeah, so of course he's not going to be as good as he was when he was He never quit, and he still had a hell of a season. Oh, when he got healthy, hurt. when he got healthy towards the end of the year, oh yeah, he looked lights out. So look, look, watch, watch the SEC title game. Watch the playoffs. Yeah, the, the three quote unquote biggest games of the year. Watch those three games. That boy was on fire. Elite competition, and and in as much as we like to crap on Oklahoma, offensively they're elite competition. That's yes. who Delpit went against. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. They uh they needed linebacker help. They got defensive lineman Jordan Elliott out of Missouri. There's a chance that he could end up being a, an edge rusher. It just depends what's going on. They got Jacob Phillips. We just talked about the sleeper for them that I really like. I can't believe this dude went so late. I just what? don't. I don't so, understand are you, football. Are you talking about Donovan Peoples Jones? Yeah. Or Is that who so, you're talking about? No, I was talking about Harrison Bryant, the tight end out of Florida Atlantic. That okay. kid is legit. So they got him, I believe, fifth round. He is something else, man. He's are you, they might have taken him. Was it fourth round or fifth? Yeah, fourth was, round. Fourth round. It was, four, it was his second fourth round pick. He was awesome at Florida Atlantic. He was absolutely awesome. Um, I think he's got a real chance of of making noise this year. That he's not going to be, you know, offensive rookie of the year, anything like that. But I, I think he could end up being a starter in this league, and they got him in the fourth round. I, so, hold on. I want to remind people that I've been watching football for a long time, closely watching drafted players for a long time. Receivers, it used to be three years before they really broke out. Running backs, it used to be one or two. Quarterbacks, it used to be two or three. Tight end, and all of those have changed, by the way. All of those are guys that can come in the league and play right away, immediately. Yeah. Um. Tight end is still a position that even the elitist of elite tight ends come in, and it takes them at least two years before they really find their footing. The difference between the game of football at the college level and the pro level for the tight end position is bigger than any position in the league. Yeah, I, I could buy that. So, so if this guy does nothing this year or next year, that does not mean a bust, okay? Yeah, that doesn't mean he's not good. All that means it just, is it just doesn't. I mean, look at look at the Broncos. Look at the two guys from Iowa last year. Okay, uh, one went to uh, Noah Fant Huston. and um, oh what's god, they, uh, the guy that went to uh, the Lions, not Hushman Zada, right? What's his name? That's something like that. Uh, it wasn't Hushman Zada. It was no. I forget what it was. I'm, I'm looking it up now. I'm looking at but, anyway. But keep keep both going. of those guys are going to be elite level tight ends, I believe. And last year they were okay, but. But they're rookies at the tight end position, and it's just a really big adjustment. Big, big, big adjustment. It takes two to three years to figure that thing out. Yeah, it sure does. It sure does. But I, I do think, so going back to that, Harrison Bryant, I do think that he, um, I think that? he has okay. a good chance. Uh, go. Nick, Nick Harris out of Washington, interior offensive lineman. Uh, good value pick. I mean, absolutely value yeah. pick. He was, he was dominant for the Huskies. Uh, and then, of course, you take a flyer in the sixth round on Donovan Peoples-Jones. This dude and, right here yeah. was given a third-round draft pick grade and come out of high school, elite-level athlete, showed flashes and signs at Michigan, and I'm not for making excuses for these guys. I'm, I'm, not, I'm very much not. But I think the reason this kid fell and this kid didn't blow up the way some of his elite-level receivers blew up is – a size wise, six two, it's a little bit shorter than some of the elite guys yep. out there. But but the other thing is at Michigan, they continually not just changed offensive coordinators, they completely changed in three years to three different offensive philosophies and systems. Yeah. And every even if they had the same OC from his first year to his second year, they they still totally changed how they were going to play the game offensively and then constant change at quarterback. I, I, I don't know how any receiver – this is exactly what I want with my seventh-round pick, by the way. This is exactly what I want. A guy that projects to be a stud, could be elite, that I'm getting this late. And guess what? If he's not elite, we're going to know in two years. Oh, yeah. and we're going to put him on a bus and send him home, and he's not going to take up a roster spot anymore, and he's making the league minimum because he was a seventh-round pick. Yeah, you're 100% right. exactly right. what you want late in the draft. I don't know why these teams continually draft players at other positions that you just know you probably could have picked those guys up in free agency or whatever. You you ain't getting him in free agency. No, 
I, I don't I don't believe so. Um, so uh, back to the tight ends. By the way, uh, T.J. Hawkinson was was the Hawkinson. guy that went to the Lions. Uh, I knew it was, I knew it was an, a long H name. That was weird. Let me uh, let me get caught up in some of these uh, chat messages here. Chris Gray's jumped in on Facebook. First time I've seen him on there. Uh, they showed us that UFO footage a few years ago. Uh, now it, it was leaked, but it was not confirmed by the confirmed. Pentagon. The UFO he, stuff is confirmed yeah. now. He said, uh, "There's a reason why they brought it back up. Get your popcorn ready." Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see something interesting pop up. McKinnon jumped in. He said, Chris is 100% right. Next year, middle linebacker safeties tend to be leaders on D, not to mention they typically have much longer successful careers compared to corners. Great examples like Ed Reed, Brian Dawkins, Troy Palomalu last forever, and they wrecked offenses. 100%. Uh, yeah, Michael, honey, the Honey Badger went to oh, yeah. one of the worst defenses in all of football. Other than that, they didn't really lose a lot or change a lot. D Ford got out of there, but they didn't replace him with anybody special. Yeah. And he didn't make that defense elite, but he made just enough big plays to slow teams down, to get them to punt instead of getting an extra first down. I just don't understand why the league is just gone just cornerback crazy and safeties are falling by the wayside, man. Yeah. Oh, it's it's crazy. Uh, Michael Fritch on Twitch said Fant got banged up but had a pretty good season for a rookie. McKinnon yeah. jumped in and said, did Moss Jr. ever get picked up? And then just say no to drugs yeah. on Twitch. Another new follower uh, said Dad Moss went to the Redkin, uh, Redskins. So, yeah, he got picked up as an undrafted free agent. I wanted so, him to get drafted so bad. Oh, I wanted to get drafted so bad. Um, as far as the Browns go, like, dislike, I, I'll tell you mine. I, I like what they did. Yeah. that's yeah. I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I, I, I did too. I did too. Let's move on from there. We will move into the Baltimore Ravens. Now, they needed linebacker help. Maybe not much. Uh, they needed edge rushing help. Maybe not much. And hey, they, they didn't needed... have a whole lot of holes. This was the best team in football for 13 of the 17 weeks of yeah. the season. Um, and then, it, <laughs> you know, their other biggest need was wide receiver. I mean, they didn't have a, a ton at wide receiver. Obviously, this is a rushing offense. Uh, but you get another speedster, and... Yeah, you're going to be all right. So, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm with you. So, what did they do? They went out. They got Patrick Queen, linebacker out of LSU, in the first round. They got J.K. Dobbins out of Ohio State, uh, running back in the second round. They picked up a defensive lineman, Justin Matabuki from Texas A&M, and he was kind of a stud. He he's one of those projects. You're going to have to stay on him. You know, you're going to stay on him, but they got some monster. Yeah. Uh, Devin Athletic Duvernay. wise, size wise, strength wise. Oh, he's unbelievable. Ain't a whole lot. You, he's a guy that you got to watch, but man, he's got potential to be a beast. Yeah. Uh, just say no to drugs said just because you dominate opponents on the schedule doesn't necessarily make you the best team in football. They had clear voids at the wide receiver position. Yes. Okay. Agreed. We, we will, but they, we will. Don't, but they don't throw the ball a lot. So, while they have voids there, however, they can throw the ball more because obviously they needed to against uh, against the Titans, right? Uh, he said, "Great show, guys. I'll be back." So appreciate absolutely. that. Absolutely, we appreciate uh, any new followers that come in. We do this every day, uh, sometime after four thirty Central. So uh, we do appreciate anybody that wants to jump in. But uh, but yeah, he, he's right. They they did need wide receiver help. Obviously, they addressed that some last year in the first round with Hollywood Brown. Now he was banged up a lot of the season. They do have a lot of veteran experience at wide receiver, um, but they, they need some younger guys, and they got that. They, uh, they went, they got Devin Duvernay in the third round, wide receiver out of Texas. They got wide receiver James Proshe out of uh, SMU and, and picked him up in the sixth round. And it's, you know, you take a flyer on a guy that can fly. Like, he, he's ridiculous. He was unbelievable in Sonny Dykes' offense. At, you get fast guys and guys that can actually run real routes and – that opens up so much more for that running game, which now has some ridiculous talent at running back. And obviously, you've got Lamar at quarterback, and we all know he can run. So yeah. it, they, they keep building around this style of offense, and nobody really has been able to figure it out yet. So, you know, yes, they got stopped by the Titans in the playoffs. That's going to happen from time to time. It is what it is. But, you know, they it's not like they were demolished by the Titans. They missed out on some fourth down opportunities, and it completely flipped the game around. And that's it. I, I like the idea of being strength on strength. You know that that's that's my philosophy in life. Yeah, is if you're really good at something, just go all in on it. And your weaknesses are always going to be your weaknesses. But uh, Al Davis used to believe this. Okay, now not that Al Davis's line of thinking was always great. All right, 
but he believed in strength on strength. And he used to talk to his general managers and his personnel guys about baseball all the time. And he was like, ah, you know, if, if you got two 20 game winners, but you can't uh, pitchers, but you, but you can't hit the ball. Don't trade a 20 game winner for a 40 home run guy. That doesn't help you. Now you're just mediocre at both of them. You know, trade whatever offensive player you got. Get a third 20-game winner. Put strength on strength in there, and you can't be stopped. Yeah. You know, and I just I just think don't worry about the things you're not good at. Be really, really exceptional at the things you're good at. What are the Ravens good at? Running the football. Yes. They got maybe the best running back in this draft yeah. at running the football behind Lamar Jackson. I think it's going to be scary to stop those guys. I oh, really do. 100%. When you got Ingram in the backfield already, and now you got Dobbins as well. Uh, just say no to drugs on Twitch. Said one more comment before I roll, and you'll like this one, Chris. Justin Jefferson was the steal of the wide receiver class. So I, I was going to comment now, that, on that why wasn't for they the Ravens. Go, but, yeah. I appreciate that, by the way. Why they didn't go to the, uh, the the wide receiver route in the first round is because five or six of them were taken before they had gotten there. Yeah, and I don't think they wanted the set, which I disagree with. I would have probably. If I needed wide receiver help, I wouldn't have been upset to, to get T. Higgins, okay? I, I think that guy could easily be – we could look back in three years and say, oh, that's the best wide receiver in this draft class. Yeah. And I don't know that we'd all be blown away, all right? That that kid has all the makings of being elite. Um, but Jefferson, uh, a lot of people assumed Ruggs was going to fall because we thought Judy and Lamb were going to be the first two taken. And, and the Ravens, there was a lot of talk that they might move up to go get him. When when Ruggs went, Judy went, Lamb went, I don't think there's anybody else they're moving up to go get. Yeah, I agree. And, and if one fell to him, I think if Jefferson would have fallen to him, they would have taken him. I really believe that. Um, but, but He chimed back in. He said, yeah, I'll take Jefferson over Judy, Lamb, and Ruggs. Woo, I, don't, I don't know right that there. I would I don't, do. I don't know where this guy's from, but checks in the mail. <laughs> Show me a Venmo. Uh, speaking on bounce. speaking on the uh, on the Ravens, McKinnon jumped in as a Falcons fan. Lamar has always appeared to me as a better Mike Vick, better arms, better legs, especially better mentality in regards to learning and professionalism. The dude is just astounding in every capacity. Vick might have had a touch better speed and moves, but it's splitting hairs at that point. Uh, yeah. And then Michael Fritz jumped in. I take him over Rugs, but not Judy and Lamb. And then um, just saying, Oda Drugs said numbers don't lie, baby. So. <laughs> You know, I understand he had a crazy year last year, but uh, I don't know, man. If you go and, and actually dig into those numbers, you know, he, he was really good. He was elite. Hey, you could, but you could do that to Judy and Lamb. Yeah, you could do it with just Judy about anybody. Rugs, definitely. I mean, we'll, we'll see. Obviously, we will see. Rugs got uh, 40 balls last year, okay? At the end of the day, in a game in which these guys catch 100 receptions a year. Wait, wait, Rugs? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he caught 40 balls. I thought you said he dropped. I was like. He caught no. <laughs> four when when these guys come out of seasons with hundred catches. Yeah, he caught forty. That while he did a lot with a little, he still only caught forty. Yeah, that's you're you're hundred percent right. You're a hundred percent right. Um, let's uh let's go ahead and wrap up the Ravens here. I I like what the Ravens did. I I thought it was, you know, it it wasn't as good as as the other two that we've already been over. Uh, yeah. but as far as like or dislike, I like what they did. I thought it was good. I, I like what they did. I like that they went strength on strength at the running back position instead of going. Um, oh, hey, hey, before before we close them out, uh, uh, round seven, they took safety Geno Stone out of Iowa. I, I meant to bring this up. Steal of the draft, in my opinion. That kid is freaking ridiculous. Like, he is I, immensely talented. Iowa had a lot talented. of guys drafted, and I think all of them have potential to be good. The, the fact that this guy fell to the seventh round, I thought he would be gone in, in three or four. Like safeties, I, I, man. I, I, don't, I can't explain the league. I know wide receiver, the wide receiver position has become so valuable in the NFL. I get that. And so we assume, well, that means the cornerback position has to get more valuable. There are more ways to defend somebody than locking somebody up man to man. I mean, there just are. Yeah. Now you're, you're hundred percent right. I, I, but I have a different philosophy than all these guys and they get paid to do it. And I don't, and I just, I wish I did. I would love to have the opportunity to build a team in my image the way I want because I just wouldn't spend that much money on it. I would no. I would get them in free agency the best I could. I'd spend a lot of money. I would spend a lot of draft capital on them. No, it makes sense. Makes sense. But, um, all right, so we, we both like the Ravens. Both like the Ravens a lot. Both like the Ravens. That moves us into 
the Pittsburgh Steelers, obviously uh, hometown team, not hometown, but it, it, team that I grew up cheering for. I didn't really have an option. My dad grew up a Steelers fan. They're in turn. I grew up a Steelers fan. There are years that I wish that wasn't the case. So <laughs> it, it does bother me sometimes that I pull for this team. But, uh, you know, let's uh, let's dive into what they did here. They needed, uh, per, you know, all these different media sources, um, Michael jumps in already. Really like the Anthony uh, Anthony McFarland pick. Add him to Connor and Snell. Okay, you know we'll we'll see. But they needed offensive line help. They needed cornerback help, and they needed running back help. Uh, they they got a wide receiver in the second round, Chase Claypool out of Notre Dame, who was fine. I I didn't really like him at Notre Dame, in a, but in a he was crazy, okay. Just stupid deep wide receiver class. You, you got maybe the least sexy wide receiver. Now, the one thing that scares me is every time the Steelers draft a receiver, the guy turns into the next Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. Like, like I didn't, you know, I didn't know who a lot of their receivers were in the past coming out of high school and college, and they end up being monsters. So, anybody who thought Antonio Brown was going to be a freak, you, you're wrong. You just didn't. No, you had no idea. You had you're no lying. Idea. He, he, had a, he had a chance to, uh, and, well, yeah, and obviously you did. To, but, but nobody, nobody, Nobody projected that. No, not right. at all. Uh, McKinnon jumps in, by the way. Ruggs reminds me of Urban, or of what Urban said about super fast receivers. They're great on long routes, but have a really hard time trying to break on short routes. They're easier to hold up on those shorter routes. Like I said during the draft, speed kills, but skills win. Uh, you have not watched Henry Ruggs. He's not just a deep threat. It's completely different, but he, he is fast. So uh, McKinnon said, how many more years till the Steelers are forced to pick up the next quarterback? Uh from from the rumors I heard today, they're already talking to Cam Newton. So I was gonna say as I mean, soon as soon as they can find one. Yeah. Uh so back to team needs for the Steelers offensive line, cornerback, running back. So first round they went wide receiver, which didn't really need. And in round three, they went with an edge rusher, Alex Highsmith out of Charlotte. Now, I did watch Alex Highsmith multiple times this year because I bet on yeah, Charlotte. Bet on Charlotte quite a I bit. bet on Charlotte a lot. I love Alex Highsmith. I think he is fantastic. Okay. However, Careful they've already got the they watched a couple of times at a small school play against other small schools. Well, yeah, like I, I thought it was great. Like I, it, in that setting, I saw him play. I thought it was good. However, <laughs> you don't need another edge rusher. If there's one thing that the Steelers have, it is edge rushers. Front like seven. They, <laughs> which, by the way, they signed uh, T.J. Watt to his fifth year extension, fifth year option, whatever. Yeah. So he'll be back again, obviously. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't think there was ever a question, but, um, but you know, after after you get done getting an edge rusher, they go get another running back who Michael just talked about on Twitch, Anthony McFarland out of Maryland. Now that kid can absolutely fly. He's he's incredibly skilled, incredibly talented, but they already got a bunch of skill guys. So, okay, like I understand it's a team need, but you got Benny Snell in the draft last year. He was okay. Uh, you got James Conner. He's pretty good, too. Okay. You know, after that, you got Kevin Dotson from Louisiana, who I think they reached for. Uh, I mean, he's an interior offensive lineman who is big. He's a big old boy. But when you go back and actually do it, and obviously, because I'm a Steelers fan, I've gone and watched, you know, highlights. And the highlights look great on these guys, but if you look at their grades, it's not great, right? So, obviously, you can you can make highlight tapes out of anybody. Um, so I would love to see Kevin Dotson be, you know, good, but that's the only offensive lineman that they drafted. They got safety Antoine Brooks out of Maryland. They got, uh, uh, defensive lineman Carlos Davis out of Nebraska in round seven. You know, at that point, you're just taking flyers on guys. I, as a Steelers fan, I was not impressed with what they did in the draft. Now, that's, you know, I rarely am I impressed with what they do in the draft. And they end up coming out looking like gangbusters. Typically, they, so, they develop players better than most people in the league. Yeah, I mean they they really do. Um, the issue is, so do the Ravens, and that's like, yeah, obviously oh, well, the yeah. Bengals. Yeah, the Bengals are getting better. The Browns, mm. I think, are getting better. Mm. Um, I mean, we'll, listen, neither the Bengals or the Browns have developed anybody in a long time. They get better because sometimes they've gone out and gotten guys, or yeah. they've drafted guys, but they haven't taken like. A two star that you know was in college and played pretty well and 
came in as a six round pick and turned that guy into an everyday starter in my life. Uh, you got a no. You got a valid point. No, no, you got they a valid develop point. people. The Ravens. Well, but here's the thing: they've got they crap all the time. They both got Patriots newer coaching do that all staffs. The time. Seattle does it all the time. Uh, the elite teams do it a lot. Yes, but the Browns and Bengals obviously have flipped over front offices, flipped over uh, yeah. coaching staffs and whatnot. So, so obviously there is unlimited okay. hope right now, which is always a good right. thing. Uh, right. McKinnon, I, I struggle with ever trusting the Browns front office because tomorrow it'll be different. Yeah, that's uh, three that's a people very valid in the front point. office will be fired before next year, even if they win ten games, because Jimmy's just can't get along with everybody. Yeah, he, well, I don't know that he can't get along with them. I just think he, I don't know, he just likes constant chaos. I guess I don't. Yeah, uh, McKinnon jumped in on Facebook. He said, uh, and this is a very valid point. He said, doubling down on your strengths? Question mark. Like a. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what it looked like. You know. I, I'm okay building strength on strength to an extent. This is I don't see this as that, though. No, they already had depth Ma- at all these Mainly positions. because I don't think I'm in love with any of the players they took. I guess that's the difference. If they were have taken J.K. Dobbins, then I'd be like, okay, they got strength on strength. They're already really good at running the football. Now they're going to be even better at running the football, and I like that. Yeah. Taking a running back that – Mm, okay, I don't know, you know, taking the edge rusher, that you, that's not strength on strength to me because I'm not sold. But we talked about this yesterday, and I guess we'll do this purpose here. The whole reason any of these guys get any of these grades is based off of what the people grading them's biases and, and understanding of what these players are. are. Um, Pro Football Focus has the Steelers at being like a, a B minus, while uh, Fantasy Pros has the Steelers being a D minus. Yeah. Well, how are we so far apart on their grade? Well, Pro Football Focus liked these guys a whole lot better than Fantasy Pros liked these guys that they took. Yeah. They, they still they look at them and say they took the same dudes, but everyone grades differently, and it's all based on if if you had Claypool high, if you had Highsmith high, if you had McFarlane high, then you're going to say they had a hell of a draft. Yeah, and which if you is had those guys like, low. It's then also you're why. Say they had a bad yeah, it's why we don't give letter grades. We tell you whether no, we like we, it or not. We say like. we like, dislike, love, or hate. We haven't really hated anybody yet. We haven't loved anybody yet. I dislike this team. Yeah, I, I dislike as well. I, it it didn't make They're it, the obvious loser in this division Yes, for the draft grade. Yes, 100%. It it didn't make sense to me what their it, – it almost looked like they went into this with no plan. They just went with their – as Lombardi talks about, their horizontal board. And – their horizontal board looked completely different from everybody else's, right? So they weren't drafting. Yeah, just trade back. Yeah, now, it, it wasn't for need. Trade. Like, they weren't drafting for need at any of these positions, but none of these guys had any real value if you go look at the big board of, of any, any not major just, media. Not thing. just Mel Kuyper in it, okay? Across the board, everybody assumed these guys were reaches. Yes. Hey, McKinnon said, don't worry, you'll hate the Falcons outside of round two. <laughs> But yes, like they, everybody that the, other than the late picks that the Steelers got, yeah. everybody was a reach. Everybody was a reach. And I don't understand that, especially for, you know, players that are not in a position of need. So I don't know how it makes you any better. I don't know. It, I, I, none of it made any sense to me. Like, obviously, I'm going to be pulling for them, and I hope it's, you know, I hope it works out well. I, I, I hmm. thought, and if they if they if this is a team that makes the move for Cam, then that makes all the sense in the world. Um, if not, this was a team that I thought was going to go up and get from or Eason. Yeah, yeah. I, I because thought they the same need thing. they need to start looking at life without Ben pretty quickly, and you never want to wait until it's over to do that. I agree a hundred percent. Like it, they, we've been through the Mason Rudolph years. We've been through well, not Mason Rudolph years, but uh. But last yeah, season no, he's was done. He can't do it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, well, Landry, who was the guy? Landry, Landry Jones. It. Yeah. Landry like Jones. You, you know, you know, right now you have enough tape on both those guys to know you don't want them on your roster. Yeah. They don't need to be there. They can't do it. You're 100% right. You're 100% right. It, it's those guys are not your, your quarterbacks of the future. Uh, Doug Hodges, definitely not it. You, you got to get somebody else in there. Uh, I think Cam fits best. I think that's where he'll end up. Um, and would it surprise me if Ben doesn't last the whole season again? I mean, it, it was yeah. it was January that they were talking about he may not play football again. 
And then in March, all of a sudden, he feels 10 years younger and his arm feels the best he's ever thrown. But like, the, I don't the know what the minute he starts getting hit, how is he going to feel? Exactly. He's been a calendar year without being hit. So, yeah, you start feeling great now. After first quarter of game one, how are you feeling now you're getting beat on? Uh, let's let's get to this. We got the loser of the draft for this division. Who do you think the winner is? Because I, I'm having a hard time picking a winner. I like what the other three teams did as a whole. I think this division got a lot better on draft day. Oh, I think it did as well. I think it did as well. It, if the Steelers have a quarterback, then they are still a really, really good football team. Oh, no, team. yeah. The Steelers are they're, they're not bad. The reason they didn't draft well is because they don't really have to, and they didn't have yeah. good draft picks to begin with because their team's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, they, they only had uh, six picks in this draft. So, you know, is what it is. Um, I I would say all right, so my, the Steelers are, are the losers the, they're uh, the obvious in this division. Losers. I'm having a hard time parsing the other three. I'm I'm gonna go with I think I'm gonna go with your Browns. So I, I kinda want it to, but I didn't want to be the homer there. The only reason I think it's between the Browns and the Bengals, because while the Ravens are an unbelievable team the way they draft it, I think the value of everybody is is either with T. Higgins in the second round is just stealing. As, yeah. a, as a receiver, that, there's no reason two other receivers should have gone before him. That, there's just there's just no way you can quantify how you looked at his Jaylen career. Jalen Rager or uh, yeah. Brandon Ayuk or Ayuk, whoever yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the just I just can't I can't get there. Well, okay? the only reason those, those guys, guys yeah, they, they got drafted all because the tape of speed. And the highlights from those guys, and I I just can't get there. The the only reason they got drafted high is because of their speed. That is it. That's the only oh, thing. Oh, there's so much more to football than that. I know. I, I know, know that but, it's important. Well, but, but this I is mean, this is kind of like when everybody Julio was Jones anywhere close to the fastest receiver in football anymore. No, but but, but he, nobody listen, wants to go against him, right? He's still a monster. Exactly. It, it, here's the deal, though. Sean Hopkins. How long has Larry Fitzgerald been great, and he hasn't been elite level speed since his rookie year? I mean, it, it, in over a decade. Uh, I but just no, don't look, understand. Look, look. It is it's different, and and here's why these teams are doing this. You saw this not this past season, but the season before. Everybody wanted a piece of Sean McVay, right? Everybody was hiring Sean McVay's laundry guy yes. and whoever else. Yeah. The Chiefs just won the Super Bowl with speed on speed on speed on speed. Right. But their offense is built completely different than everybody else's. If you're not going to spend the next ten years completely deconstructing the way you play football and building it in that image, then just drafting like them is going to make you fall on your face. But they made everybody believe that you have to have that deep play threat, and You're the guys that drafted believe. these guys didn't have it. Uh, Michael Fritz jumps in on Twitch, by the way. Baltimore wins the draft and probably the division. I hope the others keep it close. Well, I think, hey. the, I think they're going to win the division. I don't know if that's going to be close. I'd love to see them not win it. Yeah, But I think they're the far and away best team that's why I'm trying to I, – I don't know that they won the draft out of this division, but I'm trying to I, take away the fact that they have Lamar. They have a great offensive line. They have Holly Brown, uh, Hollywood Brown. Like, those can't affect my decision in this. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, Michael said everyone's looking for the next uh, the next hill. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what this is. Um, well, if you're not going to run an offense like like they run, hill's really not that valuable. Yeah. And I agree 100%. 100%. I mean, there's 20 receivers. If Hill was on any other offense, there's 20 receivers better than him. Yeah. Hill's elite because of the play calling and the way the offense is designed by Andy Reid and the and the, the the chess pieces they have on offense and Patrick Mahomes. If you don't have Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback, then Hill's, Hill's value goes way down. What yeah. do you look like the couple of games Mahomes didn't play? Because he was still fine, but yeah, he but, wasn't. but they couldn't get him the football. He wasn't elite. That's right. Like all his skills go away. If you think Derek Carr is going to get rugs the football deep all day long, you it's haven't been watching football the last three years. It's yeah. just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. You're uh, you're 100 percent right. Um, so I'm going to give it to my Browns too. I, I like the Willis draft pick. Um, I, I want it Warford, but we're talking Warford. I'm never going to pronounce his yeah. name right. Worth. He's the best lineman I thought in this draft, but we're splitting hairs between him and Wills. I thought they were one and two, um, and I 
thought there was kind of a gap maybe between them and Thomas and then a gap between them and Becton. So, I, you know, I, you know, I, as long as they got one of those two guys, I was ecstatic, selfish. I love the double pick. I, I trust the, the Phillips pick. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. I, I think, Harrison Bryan, I think was a very good pick. You know, yeah, I think, I think Jordan value. Elliott, but from Missouri, he's going to be a stud. I think that guy has a chance. The, and the reason being is because he's not going to have to do everything on that team. That defense is really good. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So I think I, I'm going to give it to them. I'm I'm doing the same. I'm going to give it to the Browns. Uh, I need I, trigger man. I need Baker to either nut up or shut up this year. Yeah. And I, I think that's the point because if, if he doesn't, obviously they'll go in, they'll draft another quarterback. Because so, this team is, I, I believe. They're loaded. I believe this team is loaded. I really yeah, think that. they've got a ton I, I, of talent. Every level of the field, and this year they shirt up. The, the reason there aren't any free agent offensive linemen is because the Browns sucked them all up. They <laughs> the paid Browns, everybody in the league. The Browns stole them all. Stole they, them all. They, did, well, they didn't steal them. They paid them. They broke up in the checkbook, and they said, you three guys are coming to Cleveland, and we're paying you. You got that right. You got that right. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us for today. Uh, if you want to see the NFC North recap, obviously you can go over to our YouTube page. It is up there, or you can watch it from yesterday's show on whatever platform you're watching. Wherever you are watching, please make sure that you are subscribed. Share the show out with your friends if you would so kindly. Leave a nice comment, a nice review. We always appreciate that. You can find everything you need to about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Chris, is there anything else we need to hit today? No, man, that's it. Tomorrow we're going to do AFC East, correct? AFC East tomorrow. Yep, I'm staying in the AFC. AFC East. So we'll talk about the uh, the Patriots. We'll talk about the Jets. We'll talk about the Dolphins, and we'll talk about the Bills. And it will be a good time. And then we'll move to the NFC East on Thursday. You guys have been magnificent. We appreciate everybody that jumped in the chat today. You guys were very active. We always, always appreciate you guys doing that and uh, keeping the conversation going. Thank you so much for uh, uh, Michael said. Thanks, fellas. What division coming tomorrow? AFC East tomorrow. Uh, we will get to your Broncos soon enough. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. We will uh, We will go on and get out of here. Everybody take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we will see you all tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure...